सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो वी आर डिस्कसिंग विद मॉड्यूल फाइव ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट वी एल एस आई सो वी हैव कवर्ड अराउंड टू वीडियोज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड विद एस आर लैच सर्किट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद द एस आर लैच ओनली बट दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी वेस्ड ऑन द क्लॉक्ड लैच ओके इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैड स्टडीड विद द अनक्लॉक्ड लैच हियर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी विद द क्लॉक्ड एस आर लैच और फ्लिप फ्लॉप सर्किट so we'll discuss with the clocked sr latch now introduction in the previous section that is previously in the video we examined the behavior of basic sr latch okay which is an asynchronous sequential circuit that is the uh, asynchronous is without any clock now we are going to check with the synchro synchronous circuit with with the use of one clock signal okay for this sr latch these circuits respond to changes in their inputs at a time determined by the internal circuit delays However, many digital systems require synchronous operation, where outputs change only in response to the clock signal. Okay, so need for this clock latch to ensure that the SR latch responds to inputs in a synchronized fashion, we introduce a gating clock signal that is called as CK. Okay, that clock signal is uh, given for the SR latch in order to uh, uh, make the synchronous uh, encounter between the outputs. This clock. restricts the changes in the output to specific periods that is when the clock is active enabling predictable and stable circuit behavior the clock ck is typically a periodic square wave form okay it is periodic in nature that is a uh, it would be shifting towards the on state and on off state when required okay so that is the periodic in nature it is applied simultaneously to all clocked logic gates in the system the inputs s and r of the sr flip flop affect the latch only during the active level of the clock that is whenever the clock is uh, at the high signal when the whenever it is at the peak signal then only the s and r effect uh, of the inputs would be getting affected okay now let us see the clocked nor based sr latch okay so here you see this diagram here here we have one change here that is nor we are we are using building this circuit using nor gate but uh, in 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 case of the inputs here that is s and r we have added one and gate here and from that we have taken one clock signal that is the second inputs of the and gate we have taken uh, shorted it and we have taken this as one single clock signal then we have two inputs s and r it is passed through an and gate then it is given to the nor gate and the uh, it is the cross coupling of the uh, another input of nor gate is done to produce the output q bar and q okay so this is the clocked nor based sr latch diagram make a note of it now see the specifications that is operations taking place that is if the clock signal ck in this uh, sr clock based latch is zero the and gates and output zero regardless of whatever the input may be the uh, whatever input may be that is s and r so sr latch maintains in its current state okay so when uh, when clock signal is zero the sr latch would be maintaining in its current state whatever may be the values of s and r okay if clock signal is equal to 1 the values of s and r propagate to the nor based sr latch okay potentially altering its state so when the clock signal is one then only the functioning would be happening that is the uh, propagation of nor based sr latch would be happening only when the clock signal is given as one okay but if s and r are equal to one that is if s equal to one and r equal to one during clock pulse equal to one both the outputs of the latch goes to zero momentarily okay and when clock returns to zero the state becomes indeterminate depending on the circuit delay mismatches that is if both s and r are equal to 1 during clock signal equal to 1 then what would be happening in the sr latch condition we have seen that whenever we have both the inputs as one the output in the output side won't be its complement that is it would be in the it would not be uh, satisfying the complementary condition that is uh, both the inputs should, both the outputs should be zero so we cannot that, that would be undetermined okay to illustrate this operation of the clocked sr latch a sample sequence of clock s and r waveforms and the corresponding output waveform q is shown in this figure okay so see this here we have four uh, waveforms one is for clock s r which are inputs and q is the output so you see here this clock signal is a periodic waveform you see here for uh, it is uh, varying with respect to one time delay it is on and off okay so this is the clock signal then we have s r and q okay so here you see here when s is 0 r is 0 q would be remaining in its previous state that is it would be 0 but when s is 1 r is 0 that is q would be equal to 1 okay then if f if s is 
R is 1, Q would be equal to 1. And if S is 0, R is 1, Q would be equal to 0. This is when clock is high. Okay. But when clock is low, it would be equal to 1. And when clock is high, it would be equal to 0. Then we have if S is high and R is 0, that is if S is 1, R is 0, then it would be equal to 1 when clock is high. Okay. Then we have a uh, when S is uh, 0 and R is 0, the clock would be high whenever the clock is. So the Q output Q would be high when the clock is at the high stage. Okay. So these are the uh, drawbacks from this waveform you could be re referring. Okay. So this figure sample input and output waveforms illustrating the operation of clocked nor based SR lat circuit. Okay. So this is the operations which are taking place. Each combination, it is uh, this is the timing diagram. You need to be noting it down. The circuit is level sens level sensitive during the clock signal equal to one. Every even narrow spikes or glitches in S or R during the uh, high clock signal, it can trigger a change in state if the pulse width ex exceeds the loop deal. Okay, so this is the CMOS implementation of the circuit that is a clock based uh, SR latch circuit. Okay, you see here they have used uh, NOR gates and uh, they have made the necessary connections as required okay so here we have they have taken the clock signal uh, using this uh, two uh, and gates okay so this is the two input and gate here they have used here okay then clock signals are uh, terminated at uh, are shorted and given here then we have s and r inputs here then this is the clock signal okay uh, of the nmos so this is the connection here cmos implementation using uh, logic gates that is uh, C, uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors. Using AND OR that is invert AOI gates that is AND OR invert AOI gates for compact design of this CMOS implementation. So this is using the AND OR invert fashion. Normally also you could be doing it that is how you could be doing normally is in uh, in place of AND gates just uh, replace it by uh, two in this is two input right we have uh, one one in one of the input is shorted this is basically two input. So what you could be doing is you could be using two input NAND gates, two two input NAND gates, and then at the end of the each NAND gate you could be placing an inverter so that it would be AND gate. Similarly for NOR gate, place two input NOR gates and do the connection. If you do it that way, the circuit would be very very complex and it would be very huge. Okay. So in order to avoid that, they have made one CMOS implementation using AOI gates. Okay. So this is the pattern for this AOI gates that is AND or invert. Okay. It reduces the total transistor count as I've told you the complexity would be reduced compared to two and and two NOR gates. Okay. It offers better noise margins and lower static power dissipation. Okay. So this is one method with this AOI gate method also you could be drawing. Also you could be drawing using the uh, normal CMOS implementation but if you do that it would be taking a lot of time and the transistor count also would be very high. Okay. So this is the NAND based SR latch here they have given for active low inputs. So this is the thing uh, which they have given using NAND gates. Okay, the same thing. Now you see here there is one change here in the circuit. Here in the starting part where the clock signals are uh, uh, arranged, here they had used AND gates in case of NOR based, right? But here they have used OR gates and here they have used NAND gates. Okay, so this is only one change here in the circuit. Then the rest of all the things remains the same. The clock signal and the outputs Q, Q bar, inputs S and R. Okay. So this figure shows the gate level schematic of the clocked NAND based SR latch with active low inputs as S and R. If clock is equal to 1 in this case, inputs have no effect on the output. It holds the, it is in the hold state. But if clock equal to 0, inputs S and R determine the next state. Okay. Whereas in the uh, NOR based SR latch, it was vice versa. When S is equal to 0, R equal to 1, Q is set. That is Q would be equal to 1. If S is equal to 1, R is 0, then Q is reset. Okay implemented using OAI that is OR and invert structure okay so this is the clock NAND based SR latch circuit here when inputs S, R and K are all active I that is if clock equal to 1 S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 1 then it would be in invalid condition but if clock equal, clock equal to 1 S equal to 1 R equal to 0 it is set state and for the next next set it is uh, for the next combination it is that is for 0 1 it is reset and when clock equal to 0 latch holds the current state okay higher transistor count compared to the active low version so this is all about clocked sr latch circuit nor based as well as 
land based okay so hope you understood this so this is very important so this notes i'm going to provide it in the description go and access it okay so that's all guys keep share uh, keep supporting like share subscribe to our channel thank you